Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check fresh release from Meng. As I promised this is a new British Air, Air uh, armored car but obviously it copies Rolls Royce from World War 1 in 135 scale and as you can see it copies 1914 and also 1920 versions. So it will be up to you which one you will replicate in the scale. But this is quite interesting kit because it features the same level of quality which is typical for Meng and also quite uh, detailed plastic molding. So now we have a commercial sample which was ordered from um, good model shop. You can find it on sale for sure. And we are going to check it closer. So first of all, this box is surprisingly small, I would say, for 35 scale. But let's not forget that this is a car in 135 scale. So that's why it's not that huge. Here you can see comparison with my hand. We have attractive box art on the on the top. Uh, it is also a Velociraptor series. It's already 10th kit out of the series. We have here a short list of the features as well as here. And then on the side we have one of the marking options from this kit. So as you can see this is a British armored car pattern 1914 and also Western Front World War I 1916. And from the other side we can see another one. It's 1920 version and comes from Egypt 1942. So basically it also covers World War II as well. Okay and now let's open it it's a top opening box and by the way this review is shot into the f uh, in full hd quality so don't be surprised that you don't have the 4k quality if you are used to it so here on the top as you can see we have assembly manual and then we have all parts packed into the separate plastic bags of course assembly manual will be checked a bit later i would like to start with plastic of course so let's check this first plastic bag, it is sealed bag, so we will need to cut through it and check these parts closer. So as far as you can see here, we have mostly external parts. And as far as I remember, this kit does not feature any interior detailing. So we will see if Meng included at least something for interior detailing. So this is a sprue B. And let's zoom in, now you should be able to see it. Here we have, as I said, mainly parts for external elements. For example, here you can see the turret parts, also some storage bin parts. And molding quality is quite good. I can zoom in even more so that you can see uh, those parts in detail. Let's uh, increase light sensitivity a bit so that you can see everything in detail. So here we can see machine gun. Now obviously professionals will replace it with some aftermarket because in my opinion it's not that good for this scale and you can see its size here in comparison with my finger. Then here you can see some of the turret parts. We have riveting pre-molded and it looks quite good. And as you can see these attachment points are thin enough in all necessary areas so it will be easy to cut through and I think it will be easy to work with these parts, but with this one, for example, and also with this one, and maybe with this machine gun as well, you will have to be careful because these are quite thin parts and it will be a bit tricky to uh, separate them without damaging them. Okay, so that's the first proof with letter B. Then we have quite, I would say, unpleasant surprise. Here you can see that we have those vinyl tires. There are six of them. So just give me a second to open it. I'm not sure how it comes that we have in 2019 we have the vinyl tires. Nevertheless, here they are. Let's zoom in. Now you should be able to see it. So we just focus the camera because it obviously not focused on the tire pattern. So as you can see tire pattern looks quite good but here on the walls we don't have any molding. So there are no writings pre-molded. And of course it's a typical vinyl part so that's why it's bendable, it's flexible but it will require some careful painting because otherwise it will be a bit tricky to get proper weathering done on those parts. And once again, I'm not sure why Meng decided to include vinyl parts instead of plastic, which would be easier to work with and which will be 
uh, better looking alternative to this what we've got here. Nevertheless, uh, those vinyl tires will be used only for one marking option because, uh, actually, for one, let's say, version of this vehicle. Because as you remember, we have 1914 and also 1920 types, and they have different wheel designs. You will see it further in the video review. Next, I would like to show you the sprue A. So here you can see it. Here the most noticeable parts are these ones for the main frame. As you can see here, we have whole frame promoted as a one piece part. That's obviously the bottom of the vehicle because as you can see here, we have the lower part of the engine. Here are the wheel arches. Also we have transmission parts, leaf springs, some parts for the car body and again molding quality is really good I can zoom in here for example so that you can see this um, frame parts as you can see they feature some um, elements pre-molded for example those front leaf springs so be careful with them and for example those towing hooks as well but again molding quality is really impressive we don't have any flash on those parts so I think it will be easy to work with them and the only thing I can say is that um, for example uh, some of those thin parts like those ones will require some due attention because otherwise it will be really difficult to cut them off the sprue. And now we move to the next pair of sprues. So here you can see that, surprise, we have uh, plastic parts for the wheels. So some of you might be confused why do we have also vinyl tires as well as plastic parts. So as far as I can guess, those will be used for different versions. But of course we will confirm it in assembly manual, so here you can see it. Uh, here, for example, we should assemble those tires out of separate pieces. Also we have separate rims, obviously this will make assembly process easier. But as far as I can guess, those ones will be used only for the earlier version. And you will have to combine those two halves together. And those ones, as far as I can see, they are used for the spare wheels. And note that storage boxes are promoted as one piece parts. So as you can see, you won't have to combine any uh, separate panels. You just separate them off the sprue and you are good to go. Quite interesting uh, design, especially after you see vinyl parts included into this kit. Next we have car body. This one is also promoted as one piece part. So just give me a second to cut through this plastic bag in order to show you this nice car body. So as you can see it is molded as a one piece part. Let's zoom in a bit so that you can see everything closer. And note that cowling is uh, or bonnet is molded closed because we don't have engine here. And here for example the frontal armor section and also the front grill are molded separately so you will have to attach them. The same can be said about the rear part and here inside you can see that we have those tabs which will help you um, preserve rigidity of the whole construction but otherwise it looks really nice we have riveting we have some external features but uh, again we don't have internal detailing and some others might be um, let's say sad about it because uh, in such small vehicle it would be cool to have some internal detailing as well and another plastic port here we have the as far as you can see this is a turret section together with some polycaps so I guess you might have the movable wheels on this kit, even though I wonder who will need such upgrade on the plastic model. Nevertheless, uh, here you can see the turret part, as you can see hatch is molded shut, so we won't be able to open it. Again, quite surprising. But uh, considering that you don't have any internal detail and that is not that shocking, I would say because there is nothing to show inside, it will be just empty. And here you can see these polycaps, again, nothing special, this is a typical element. They are usually included in all armor kits from Mank. And next we also have clear parts, because as you remember, this vehicle had the headlamps and also tail lights, as far as you can remember. So they're packed into the separate plastic bag. Of course, this bag is sealed. And of course, those clear parts, as you can see, they're also wrapped into another plastic bag, just to be sure that you won't scratch those parts. But they look quite good. I don't have any complaints about molding quality. The only thing you will need here is the masks, 
because masks are not included as far as you can see, but uh, who knows, maybe it will be somewhere on the bottom of this box. So let's move on. Here I can see some cardboard with decals and P thread. Let's zoom out a bit. So here you can see them. Just give me a second, I will open them and we will take a look at them. Obviously all those P parts will be used for wheels, actually for wheel rims. So here you can see them. Note that P thread is also wrapped into the film in order to avoid any scratches. Uh, we have here two sizes of those wheel rims. Here you can see it from the other side. Okay. Another bonus is decal sheet, obviously. Just give me a second to remove it. So we have also enforcing, uh, reinforcing cardboard, which will help uh, to avoid the bended P parts. And here you can see a decal sheet. And note that there is uh, no mention of where it was printed. So I'm not sure where is, whether it was printed in cartograph like in some other mank kits or it just came like this. Okay, uh, next we have assembly manual. So here it is, let's zoom out. Assembly manual is printed in black and white, but no worries because we have marking guide printed in color. We will check it a bit later. First, I would like to take a look at this assembly manual. So on the first page, we have a quite short history note. This is really unusual for Mank because usually they were including quite extensive articles in the beginning, but we have it in four languages, even Russian is here. Next, we have some safety advices, assembly advices, and also assembly manual legend. And then we have assembly process uh, shown with uh, those quite typical Mang um, pictures. Note that here we have four marking options. They're marked with their own uh, letters, so you have to choose the necessary parts according to the marking option you choose to build. Everything starts with a frame, then we continue with chassis parts, um, again we assemble some of the suspension parts, actually this is a transmission then we continue with assembly of the um, hull and then we attach hull together with frame. Um, here you can see that we assemble the cargo bed and then we continue with storage box, hull part assembly, front wheel mud guards assembly and here you can install this, uh, let's say front doors for the radiator also here we use completely different approach. This is a for C marking, so be sure to use those parts if you are building this version of the vehicle. Uh, then we continue with White's assembly. And next, again, we have two different approaches to the assembly process, so be sure to use the right one. Next are the wheels. Here you will have, as far as you can see, you will have to slightly bend the P parts in order to get the realistic appearance. And then you insert these parts inside those tires. So now it's more or less understandable why we have two separate tires. But then from the other side, we have one piece tire and the assembly process is approximately the same. So uh, who knows why it was decided to do it like this. But so you can see that rear tires on this vehicle they had the uh, double wheel assembly and it is visible here while the C and D markings they will have bigger wheels which will be replicated with uh, vinyl tires they won't be replicated with P and plastic so it will be up to you which one you will choose here we continue with turret assembly and again you can see that mm, two separate versions are available um, different machine guns, different design and the final step, 18th step, is uh, actually installation of the turret on the vehicle. And next we have parts map, cover reference chart. Here we have paint numbers in Meng and also accretion uh, paint designations. And here is just the empty page. And next we have also the marking guides. Um, so as you can see they're printed in color. These are full profiles for the vehicle so you would know what to place this or that 
symbol where to place and also how to paint the camouflage but here obviously it's one color and it's just a gray and as far as you can see this one comes from western front world war one 1916 then we have two more this one is from 1914 also world war one but it's painted in camouflage as you can see so it might be a bit more interesting version here we have another one uh, this one comes already from um, rough egypt 1942 so it was in world war ii and know that now it has bigger wheels so modern version was different with its wheels and here you can see another one it comes from 1920 rough and again with those huge wheels on the vehicle so those are basically the final components of this kit in my opinion this build might be interesting for those who did not try the alternative from Rodan because as you remember Ukrainian company was also manufacturing this kit in 135 scale and in my opinion it looks quite good of course it's a shame that we don't have uh, interior included and it's also not cool to see the vinyl parts instead of plastic parts I think Mank could you know, mold all those tires out of plastic for better appearance but of course I will be happy to hear your opinion here in the comment section below uh, you can also support us by pressing the donate button on our website because now we are trying to get money for the new streaming device so that you can watch all those video reviews live. They won't be uploaded one by one. And of course, don't forget to press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you won't miss new video reviews and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Bye.